So our next topic is taxation. I think it's fair to say that Germany's gambling tax situation is neither the easiest to understand nor the most ideal from an industry perspective. With us today we have Professor Dr. Christian Jandorf, Professor at Tax Law, Institute at the University of Münster and partner at HLB Schumacher Hallemann. And I'm certain that Professor Jan Jandorf excuse me, will be able to enlighten us regarding the current tax situation and perhaps even regarding possible future remedies. Professor Jandorf, the stage is all yours. Thank you very Thank much you for very coming. Much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be here. It's a pleasure and an honor to talk to you. And it's good to hear, as Ed pointed out in the last presentation, that even non-licensed operators pay taxes in Germany. So this shows us that taxation is a threat and uh, therefore operators prefer to pay instead of um, performing uh, a non-licensed business. Let me start with two messages. First, if your gambling business in Germany is successful or not, depends on taxation. Second, the state failed to channel gambling on a legal pathway because taxation market Taxation makes it almost impossible for legal operators to compete with their illegal competitors, especially if they do not pay the tax. The reason is that the lawmaking authorities are still convinced that the tax burden can be overloaded to the gambler. This was and is a mere theoretical concept which does not reflect the economic reality. However, this theoretical concept of taxation is the reason why litigation against strangling taxes failed before the courts. So, today we are talking about taxes. I will start my presentation now. Here you learn something about me. This is the mandatory disclaimer, as we've seen in the last presentation as well. This is a short overview of our topics today. Um, I will start with some more general aspects about business taxation, which not necessarily have something to do with, in particular, gaming and gambling, but our focus will be, indeed, the taxation of gambling and gaming. So, in order to get along with the different expressions in the two languages, I included a table of terms and definitions. If you have the presentation available, you can uh, check in order to uh, find out how I use certain expressions and if they, uh, uh, how they correspond to the English language. Let's start with the taxation of gamers and gamblers. And when I made research in the internet how other states tax the gamblers and gamers, I found out that, let's say, at least a lot of states tax the winnings of a gambler. Germany has here a special approach. Private winnings of a gambler are tax-free. So, this is, uh, from my appearance, uh, more or less exceptional in the world. However, if a gambler starts to become professional, then he runs a business and then he is subject to a business taxation. And in practice, this becomes relevant, for example, uh, if you consider poker players, in my practice, we have several poker players that moved from private players to professional ones, and now they are always in struggle with the German tax authorities, and especially why the bookkeeping of a poker player does not correspond to the bookkeeping of an ordinary company, as you might expect. 
So maybe this is uh, from the player side. Now, when we, I come to the business side, if we talk about taxes, we have to talk about the tax base, because all about tax is the tax base. The tax rate at the end is not the decisive criteria. And what you see on that table is a very simplified PNL profit and loss statement, where we start with the earnings, and we set off the costs from the earnings, and at the end, we show a profit. And taxation can trigger almost at any part of the PNL. And if you have taxes on earnings, then you are on the killer side of taxation. And you see, in the second column, there is the German amusement tax, the betting establishment tax, lottery tax, online casino tax, virtual slot gaming tax, and so on. We go closer to that in a few minutes. They are taxed at stake on a very gross basis. You cannot deduct anything. So you may not know even if your profit under the bottom line is sufficient to pay the tax. And the justification to tax at that gross, gross, gross level is that the leg legislator thinks you can overload the tax burden to the player. But this is only a theory and not the economic reality. And you see, most of Germans' gambling taxes are taxed at a gross, gross basis, and this means it's a very sharp and very hard taxation. If you can at least deduct the costs, the winnings that you pay out. Then we talk about the gross gaming revenue. It's still a gross basis, gross gaming revenue, but at least you can deduct the winnings what you pay out to the player. You see that the amusement tax, you see it twice, some amusement taxes are on a gross gross basis, others are on a gross revenue basis. And the casino tax the, uh, and the online casino tax are uh, actually uh, a tax on gross uh, um, gaming revenue basis. And then you see on the right hand side, the right column, there you see the ordinary business tax that all companies have to pay, corporation tax and trade tax on the profit. After deducting all expenses, you tax the profit. And the, the profit taxation in Germany is 30%. This seems by figures very high. Compared to the gambling taxes, we will learn that they are, well, most of them will tax at a rate of 5.3. But these 5.3 are much more than an ordinary uh, gaming gambling operator pays uh, uh, um, business tax corporation and trade tax. Well, surfing through the internet, I want to. I was looking for uh, actual information about Germany, and I found a ranking that Germany is a champion. You see, Germany is placed number one with a tax burden of ninety percent. What does this slide tell us? It tells us actually not very much. And this list refers to one specific game. It means casino gambling. And there we have a special tax regime that only refers to the monopoly of the state-run casinos. So this table does not give us the sufficient information that we want to see. So I tried to develop 
a, another table which is, enables us to show all about gambling taxes, what we can think of at the moment. And we will, um, you don't need to have the pictures, you can download this from my website if you want. So you have that in your, uh, for your records. Um, the left side is the ordinary business taxation. There I think it's worth mentioning some aspects because especially foreign operators doing business in Germany, they have also taken into account some aspects of ordinary business taxation. I come to that point. And then we see on the right hand side all the specific gambling and gaming taxes. Let's start with ordinary business tax. When is a company subject to German tax? It is if it's a German, on, in tax terms, a German company, and this is the case if it's organized under the statutes of Germany, or if not, if it's organized under the statutes of a foreign country, if the place of effective management is in Germany. Um, so foreign operators with a place of effective management in Germany are taxable in Germany on a worldwide tax basis. This is a more or less a rare case. The more often case is if a foreign operator has a German permanent establishment or a permanent agent. What happens then? If you, have, for example, as a foreign operator, have an office in Germany in order to organize your German business, then you have, well, have, are very likely to have a permanent establishment or a permanent agent, and that brings you to German taxation for the source profit that it generated in Germany. And if you have neither place of effective management, nor a permanent establishment, nor a permanent agent, and you're just sitting outside of Germany, then you are not subject to German corporate and trade tax. The tax burden is uh, 30%, and maybe let me address one uh, particular point at uh, this uh, place. There are a lot of, oh, I don't know if a lot, but some German operators, they use the uh, double tier multi structure, and that brings the tax burden down under certain circumstances down to a rate of effective taxation of 8.5%. And this is exceptionally good, but uh, there are some uh, figures have to be, uh, criteria have to be fulfilled in order um, to uh, get this run under the German Foreign Tax Act. And in the last line there is, you address the state uh, casinos, they are exempt from all business taxes because they are underlying a special casino tax which covers all other taxes except VAT. Um, now, we have five minutes more. Uh, we come to the specific gambling taxes and the Renvet Lotteriegesetz, I don't know how to translate it, that uh, regulates taxation for horse bettings, sports bettings, online slot games, online poker games, and lotteries. Let's keep lotteries aside. There you see a taxation at a tax rate of 5.3% on the stake, let's say the gross gross revenue, where you do not deduct the winnings that you pay out 
to the players. And also, foreign operators are subject to this tax if they have seat or permanent establishment in Germany. Or if not, if the counterpart, the player, concludes the gaming contract in Germany. So this is, let's say, the decisive criteria. If the player sits in German location, then the contract is taxable under the Renwet und Lotterie Gesetz. Um, so, and this is uh, uh, the reason why the foreign operators, even if they're not licensed, as we have learned in the last presentation, pay taxes on uh, uh, such games in Germany. There is an, uh, also a online casino tax, but as far as I see, at the moment only in two countries, in Schleswig-Holstein and in uh, North Rhine-Westphalia. And it's the same nexus for the uh, uh, operators if your counterpart, the player, the gamer, the gambler, is sitting in Germany, then the tax is triggered. And um, so, conclusion, the location of the operator is irrelevant. And even if it's illegal, it's taxable. We have uh, already heard this several times now. But if you look at the regulation in Schleswig-Holstein, one can have doubts if this is also the case for Schleswig-Holstein, uh, because the uh, wording of the tax law is somehow peculiar, so that it's at least arguable if they can impose tax on illegal online casino games. What's next? Then we have some local muni municipality taxes, like um, the uh, betting establishment tax, Wettbüro Steuer, and the amusement tax is a tax on terrestrial slot machines. And um, the betting establishment tax is imposed on a gross gross basis the stake the price that uh, the, uh, the bettor pays for placing the bet and you see the tax rate differs between i, I found uh, examples between two three maybe four five percent because it's a cities that impose the tax you cannot have the overview of all what is happening in germany and the uh, amusement tax on terrestrial slot machines. We have a dual tax system. There are cities that tax on the gross gross basis of the stake, and others that um, tax on more or less what we would consider gross gaming revenue and therefore the tax rates differ and we see a wide range of different tax rates um, uh, concerning these taxes. There's one island in Germany, it's not actually an island but sometimes it seems to me to be an island, it's Bavaria, uh, where these taxes are not levied. So Bavaria is for many reasons a favorable place in Germany and this is one reason more. Uh, these taxes are also uh, um, subject to a VAT. Uh, last point are the state-regulated casinos. This is, in fact, the old state monopoly. Either the state runs those casinos or 
private companies with a, a preferential state license run those casinos. They pay the casino tax. This is uh, levied by the states. Uh, on the um, gross gaming revenue basis and we see a lot of different tariffs depending on the amount of gross revenue, also step tariffs, which is impossible to present here in uh, 20 minutes. I see my time is over. Uh, this uh, pity because I brought much more information for you. I made some case studies uh, which reflect the latest decisions of the highest German tax court. Uh, uh, but this uh, uh, is not a problem for us today because all this information you can read in the presentation. This is available for you all. So. Um, considering the time, I will close yes. my remarks and uh, thank you very much for listening. And before you leave the stage, uh, Professor Jandorf, uh, I think we have uh, the opportunity for one or two questions from the audience. So again, you can use Slido, but you can just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. So we have a speaker there. Um, Carlijn, could you get a microphone to... Could you please state your name and your, um, the company you work at? Good morning. My name is Jochen Bieber from Chevron Group. I have one question uh, to one of your slides. You are saying that the tax burden in, on the corporate tax burden in, uh, in Malta is 8.5%. Could you quickly elaborate uh, how you calculate the 8.5%? Because I'm only aware of the 5.3% 5, 5 uh, yeah. Tax burden, corporate tax. I explained it's even better. The tax burden in Malta turns out to be five. And the additional tax burden due to the dividend distributed to the German operator is again about 3.5. So it's even better. In bo on both levels, you come out to have a tax exposure of 8.5 instead of 30. And this is a possibility that one may at least think of if it's uh, implementable. Of course, the German uh, Foreign Tax Act tries to avoid such uh, constructions of tax evasions, but there is, it's a legal structure which allows bracket under certain conditions to uh, uh, come out at this tax burden. Thank you. Thank you. I also think, and we then we need, really need to wrap up, we had one question in Slido. Um, if we can have the Slido question on the stage, please. So, Professor Jandorf, historically, how amenable are German politicians to economic arguments regarding taxation? Maybe it's one for a longer philosophical uh, mm -hmm. But could you maybe, do you have an opinion, a short opinion on this? Again, please. Uh, the, um, so the question is also in front of you. So how, how open, let's say, are German politicians to economic arguments about taxation? In particular, gaming. Okay, this uh, should have been my uh, final remark. Uh, um, I think if the legislator, the lawmaking authorities, mean it business with chan uh, channeling the legal gambling business and to distinguish it from the illegal business, then they have to be convinced that both parties should have equal playing field. But so far, I do not see any uh, um, activity on the legislative side that this will uh, come true. The, the taxation of gambling is always a nexus to the, taxation, uh, to the regulation. If the regulator acts and regulates, then the taxation follows. So maybe if we see new regulations, openings uh, in some uh, 
uh, uh, places, we will see maybe um, a more relaxed uh, um, uh, a taxation system, which takes into account the uh, um, the core criteria, and this is if you want a legal business, you cannot impose a tax that gives incentive to be illegal. Yeah. And even if Ed pointed out that a lot of illegal operators pay tax, but we do not know if they put all their revenue in the tax return. So, um, Maybe we keep this question yeah. for the Christmas uh, list that Nico Janssen <laughs> referred to yesterday. Uh, Professor Jandorf, thank you very much for joining us today here. We will include the link to this document that you showed us in the post-conference uh, mailer, so you all have it yeah. in your mailbox in case you miss it here. Uh, thank you very much for coming, and let's join for coffee for the next 20 minutes in the foyer here. Thank you very much. <laughs>